15 tips that will change your photography forever from the easiest one to the hardest one. Tip number one, rule of third. All right, so trick number one, the rule of third. The rule of third is imagine you have an, an image and you cut it in three pieces, from left to right and from up and down. The idea is you place something that is more important on one of the third. For example, here, you see a lot of people take this view and they center it like this. I'm shooting this black and white, but it could be better to have either two thirds of the water and the land and only one third of the sky. So let's try that. Or the reverse. It just gives a more dynamic view. Here are some other examples of rule of third where you can really see where the rule of third makes a difference. It's just something that's been used in painting for hundreds of years. Tip number two. Use leading lines. We are here in Montmartre in one of my favorite part of Paris, and I love this street. But you see, if I take a photo like this, you know, which is kind of nice, I have a leading line, but it's not really leading inside of the photo. If I go down a little further, come with me, we're gonna get a better leading line. I'll show you. Now look behind me. Now that's what I call a leading line. Look at this, it's like an S curve and it leads to the Sacre Coeur. One of my favorite leading lines of all of Paris. And this is a photo I just took right now, but I was there the other day, it was pouring rain and I got that shot. And I came back another time and I got that shot. So that's the importance of a leading line. It really helps to give depth in the photo. Tip number three, the importance of having a full run element. We are here on the Alexander III Bridge, the nicest bridge in Paris, and I want to shoot the Eiffel Tower. Now a lot of people, what they do is they shoot here like this, and they take a photo which is okay, but let's see if we can frame them with this statue. You don't want it to be too close or too far. You just want the statue to be a foreground element. So let's do that and compare. And what's crazy is that I also shot this another day where we had a great sunset. And look, this is the final version, much better than just shooting without the statue. So foreground is important. It's the difference between pro photography composition and very amateurish. So frame in the frame, one of my best trick on composition, which is to find natural elements to frame the subject. We're here in the Louvre, in one of the nicest corridor in the world. And right behind me is this natural door. And the architect who did the pyramids in the 80s perfectly aligned them with the door. And it's gonna give an amazing frame in the frame. I came two days ago when there was nobody and I got this shot. Trick number five shooting at the right time with the golden hour. The golden hour is either at sunrise, after that the sun has rise, or it is one hour before sunset. It's when the sun is low and everything is golden. Okay, we are here on the Art Bridge and I came with Matteo, my director, we came here in November. We had an incredible sunrise, an incredible golden hour. Now look at the difference. You have a lot of people, you know, versus sunrise, and you'll see the difference of photo. I mean, a lot of people just take daylight photo. Let's compare this photo that I'm gonna take now. Versus the exact same framing that we shot here on the sunrise. Of course, the sunrise photo is gonna sell a lot better in gallery because photography is all about writing the light. So shoot at the right time. Trick number six, shoot at the blue hour. This is a beautiful view of Paris, but it's kind of boring right now because the light is, is not really the blue hour. The blue hour is the magic window where all the sea lights are turned on and it's not dark yet. Let me show you the difference. This is without the blue hour. In about half an hour, it'll be the blue hour. Check it out. And now it's the blue hour. It's for about 10 minutes, we get this incredible light. It's not too dark. It's not too bright. The sea lights are on. Let's go. Let's continue. So tip number seven, and one of the most important and most obvious one. This view is one of my favorite view in Paris. It's right next to Notre Dame. I love the leading lines also of that Seine River, but right now the light is okay, but it's kind of boring. Now compare this with this incredible sunset that I got years ago, which I actually ended up making a cover of a book. I would have never met the cover if I had taken that photo at this time. So let me show you the difference. Boring compared to that. Look at the colors, you see? Again, photography means writing with the light, and that's the difference, mesdames and messieurs. Uh, 
Another cool trick is to find high vintage points. Tip number eight, you know, look in the city, uh, research on Google, look on Instagram. I found this place, for example, which is the tower of the Tour Montparnasse. It's the highest vintage points in Paris. And you see all of Paris by night and we got incredible shot at night. We also went to the Cheval Blanc, a beautiful restaurant that just opened where the Samaritaine is. We went all the way up there and you have this incredible view on the Art Bridge and on the Pont Neuf and you can get incredible photos, not even at night. Like I got these really cool black and white photos from there and I got that one shot at night. So do some research and find amazing, amazing high vintage views. Okay, tip number nine, isolate your subject. The whole idea of composition is what? Define what story you want to tell, take out anything that's not going to help tell your story and put in anything that's going to help tell your story. This is a good example. Behind me is the Lapin Gilles, one of the nicest cabaret in all of Paris. I want to take an iconic shot of this. And so if I take it from here, I mean, I got a trash can, I got a fence, I got like so much people. Uh, it's absolutely awful. But if we get closer, maybe we can isolate it. Let's see, come with me. Let's isolate our subject here. So to be able to tell a strong story of this beautiful, magnifique cabaret in Paris, I'm gonna take a panel starting from this incredible lamp all the way down here, and I'm gonna stitch it into Lightroom. Also, I came back here another time when there was a beautiful light and I got this shot. Now talk about a strong story. Does that work for you? So I have an idea of a, of a shot. Team number 10 is I want to see if I can compress, do a frame in the frame of the bridge, but by shooting uh, with a 7200, I'm going to compress a lot of the shot. Ooh, I love it. I love it, but the light is so awful. So I tried to use uh, the tree as a foreign element. It doesn't work. It works better if we really go between the tree and, and, and uh, the two trees, basically. I'm going to try. Yeah, so we're gonna have to wait for the blue hour. In one hour, I'm freezing to get the shot. But I, you know, as I said, I like to sort of frame stuff. This one really works for me, but you will see at the blue hour, it's gonna be amazing. You see, I think we have an opening right there where I can zoom in. The problem is that this is made, there's a lot of leaf everywhere. And I'm gonna try to get an opening where I can get the bridge and the Eiffel Tower. And in exactly five minutes, the Eiffel Tower is going to turn on with beautiful lights. This photo, I'm not going to be able to sell. I'm going to have to pay royalties on it, but it's so good, I want to get it. So I did find an opening where I'm, I'm really like zooming in. I just want to get the bottom of the Eiffel Tower frame in the frame. Let's see. I'm at one second of exposure, 1.3. So always make sure it's sharp. Yeah, it's good. It's a little bit crooked, so I'm gonna make it better. In two minutes, the lights are gonna come on and it's just gonna look spectacular. You see, what blows my mind is that we had a very rainy day. It was white, it was disgusting. And now we're at the blue hour and for about 10 minutes, we have like God giving us a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful light. So no matter how bad things can get uh, you know where you have like a just really a bad light if you shoot right after the city lights are on you always get a good shot so i always have at least that 10 minutes per day so what i do is what we did today is i work out on my composition when the light is poor and when the light is right i just get the one two three four shots which i think are going to be the winning shots okay so the lights of the eiffel tower just turned on it's going to be about three minutes so i'm going to get the shots Take your time, make sure that every shot is sharp. Yeah, three minutes to get the shot. Tip number 11. One of the tricks that I like the most, tip number 12, 
is when you have an amazing view like this, I mean, we've got a leading line, we got a beautiful series of bridges in Paris, is to shoot very long exposure. I came back here a few weeks ago in November and I put on an ND filter inside my camera and I took a five minute exposure, five minutes. Now look at this, look at the sky, look at the water. The water is very flat, the sky is very stretchy. It's amazing, it really makes a view like this come to life. So you see the difference between no lone exposure and no lone exposure, the difference is crazy. One type of photography that I love is Tip number 13, one type of photography that I love is lone exposure with very graphical things like the Eiffel Tower. So the Eiffel Tower is very sharp. You put like an ND10, you get like a two, three minute exposure. You know, you go at the lowest ISO you can, like ISO 50, and boom, you get the stretchy cloud and the Eiffel Tower that's very, very, very sharp. Beautiful, abstract kind of shootings. Trick number 14, negative space. I came here yesterday morning, there was nobody here, it's super crowded. What you see behind you is the Pyramid of the Louvre. I had this idea because there was a really bad white sky and basically what I did is I put the pyramid really at the bottom of the photo and I got all the white sky and this is the final result. Probably one of my favorite negative space photo ever. Last tip, I'm a huge fan of Alan Scheller. Check out his work on Instagram and on his YouTube channel. It's absolutely amazing. He specializes in this kind of urban photography where you find a lot of shadow like this. Street. Look at this street, it's a very old street in Paris. So we are in a shadow and we wait for the light to come and maybe you wait for one person to pass. What I do is I put my Sony in black and white. If you go to the creative style, you can put it in black and white. There's two kinds of black and white. Take the one that, uh, that has the most contrast and then what you do is you underexpose your photo a lot. And now I'm going to be taking shots like this where I have like, I'm in the shadow and there's just a shaft of light and like one person is passing. We have a couple of very old medieval streets here. We're going to be doing that and check out the result. It's absolutely crazy. You can get the preset. I have special preset that will make this pop like crazy under this video. So let me show you. You see this wall behind me. When the sun is hidden by the clouds, you don't see anything. But when the sun is not hidden and it's full on, there's a tree that casts a shadow and it just makes a beautiful texture. Then I just have to wait for one person to pass and boom, I got like an Alan Scheller beautiful shot. All the photos were retouched with my presets that took years for me to make. You can get them on this video with all my books for like $1.99. Check out this video on New York where I had 48 hours to take gallery quality photo starting now.